So Bolo is in New York, is what I expect to hear pretty soon. You know, um, you know I just decided to post this preemptively, I might as well. Since uh, I give it five or six weeks, now that it's in Dallas. I think the turning point for this epidemic for me was when, uh, remember when, I think it was in Monrovia, they raided the hospital, they raided the quarantine center and released all these uh, interred there. I don't know if you remember that event. And they took back a whole bunch of infected blankets, mattresses with them. So when I read this, that was the just the moment where I said, that's it, West Africa is fucked. And, uh, of course, I still think West Africa is fucked, and all of the African continent is fucked. Um, I mean, even though some of the bordering the countries supposedly close their close their borders, it will eventually spread to uh, you know all these other countries: Sudan, Ethiopia, eventually Egypt, Morocco. Once it's in Morocco, it gets to Spain. But all of this doesn't really matter now. I mean, the fact that Africa will just be a boiling pit of Ebola, and no matter how you try to close the borders, it's gonna just, it's gonna jump across. It's gonna jump across to Europe, to Asia. Again, now, I've been through all this before. But now, But now I really think that you know, it's it's obvious that some of us are gonna die. Many of us will die. This time next year. But what, what should we really be getting out of this? What should we be taking out of the whole experience? As soon as, soon as Africa is a steaming pit of viral infection, you know, you're not gonna close all the airports, you're not gonna close Sudan, Egypt, you're not gonna close uh, South Africa. Again, once it gets to Spain, you're not going to close Spanish and French. Yeah, I'm sure it's... Okay, I'm passing on the right. I know my driving habits. But really, you're not going to close every single airport in the world. You're not going to close uh, the goal. You're not going to close Heathrow once it gets there. You know, because commerce is... You still need commerce. If you shut down commerce, international commerce, for just a couple of weeks, a few months, it's going to make the situation so much worse. It's going to destroy everything. But from now on, I think, again, after this epidemic is through, let's just look, look ahead a few years. As soon as this one is over, I think from now on, as soon as there is any like, mention of hemorrhagic fever, Marburg, Ebola, anything that people don't have immunity yet to, I think the very first response will be, as soon as it gets out of hand, out of control, the outbreak in any village, they'll just burn it down. They're going to just nuke next time, like in years ahead, you'll see, they're just imme immediate international response would be to nuke the village where this new disease has popped up, whether it's Marburg or what's the other one called, I'll look it up later and then post it in just a second. That's how it is. People, are, you know, they keep they keep their humanitarian side and their sane side until the very last minute when everything goes completely haywire. People start killing other people. And people look. I know that 
this time next year, it's very likely, it's quite likely that a lot of us will be dead. And I really, again, somehow want to take the best out of this. I want to, sorry guys. I, I wish we could, you know, just maybe live our lives a little differently, maybe for this, this next few months, this next half year, you know, maybe, I don't know, just go home and hug your dog and cat a little harder, you know? Uh, I really wish we could just, I don't know, for the, for the next few months, live a little like the world is gonna end. Like it's 2012, December, and uh, the mind apocalypse really is a thing. You know, I just really wish we could, I wish we could live, uh, The risk of sounding like, what's his name, like Matthew, uh, what's, what's the guy, the, the shaggy haired guy, Matthew, Matthew Stein, Stern, Stern, well anyway, the Matthew, the Union Square Matthew guy, and the risk of sounding like him, I really think we should, I believe, uh, I once heard, uh, I believe Bill Hicks once said, and I paraphrase because it was a while since I saw the clip, he said uh, about AIDS, right? When they finally f find the cure for AIDS, for HIV, people will be fucking like bunnies. People <laughs> will be just fucking like rabbits. And I think it's what uh, Bill Hicks said. Of course, you know, it's been decades since then and AIDS hasn't been cured. And there is no vaccine for HIV. But on the other hand, you know, it just, the disease went out of fad, you know, it's, it's treatable and people live their years and decades with it, so it's, it's never gonna happen. There will not be the AIDS cure moment when everybody just goes out and just screws everything that moves. Um, but maybe now is the time, maybe the complete opposite. This new disease that just cropped up, maybe this should be our stimulus, our impetus to, you know, go around. And I'm not saying screw uh, everybody, everything that moves, but, uh, you know, there was, they can make the move. I mean, if, if there is this girl you wanted to ask out, you know, go ahead, ask her out now. If there is, you know, some stuff you wanted to try out, maybe now is the time. Yeah. Of course, every day should be the time, because uh, with my my sort of driving, I could uh, I could kill myself, I could shatter myself to pieces, you know, any any instant. I know that Ebola spreads through fluids. But right now, so so far, like in the United States, in Europe, not too many people have it, right? Have Ebola yet. So now is the time. If you want to come in contact with people, do it now, because I think it will be a while. It will be a year or two or maybe de a decade before you can come in contact with anyone again. You know, before you can touch. I think it might be a year or several years before you can touch anyone without a spacesuit on. And by the way, I'm ordering my spacesuits online now. Well, they're cheap. <laughs> on Amazon and eBay. They're already selling a bowl of bread kits. Also on Alibaba you can find them, you know, on the cheap. They sell bulk uh, Ebola prep kits. You know, the mask, the cover, all everything. Yeah. Look, I don't, I don't know what I'm saying. I know that this video, I'm not the best rambler in the world. I know I can't really convey my thoughts in a clear and consistent manner. But I'm just saying, if if you ever wanted to skydive, bungee jump, you know, I think now now just might be the time to do this thing. You know, whatever you wanted to do. Sorry. Sick. Maybe now is... Yeah. So, you know, if you ever want to jump off, you know, off the top of my head, if you want to jump off the Brooklyn Bridge, I don't know why I'm thinking of the Brooklyn Bridge for some reason. If you wanted to jump off the Brooklyn Bridge, if you want to scale Mount Burjaro or something, if you ever wanted to have an orgy, you know, if you ever wanted to try Bestiality? Okay, no. <laughs> um. Look, I'm saying, 
you want to travel to Europe, if you want to visit a safari in a place that doesn't have Ebola yet, <laughs> maybe now is the time. You should do this now. Uh, you know, if there's any food you wanted to try out, if there's any overrated experience you wanted to make sure it really is overrated. Uh, it's, it's fucking. Again, you know, I'm driving through these populated areas and I'm just... Half of these people might... Like a third, even if a third, imagine it's just one out of three people you know is dead within a year. Again, I know most of these people when they're gone, you won't even know they're gone. You, you didn't even know they ever existed in the first place. I mean, they didn't know you existed, you know, they, they existed. I mean, what's your circle of uh, actual acquaintances? People you notice were gone or dead. This is not, not the very... Huge. Anyway, so you know, if there is anything you regret, if there is, you know, if I mean, now if you want to rekindle a friendship, I mean, think I think I might do. It. There is a friend in Israel who I haven't seen in many years, you know, since I was 11. I just missed this guy, you know, in Jerusalem. Left him back into last time I saw him was back in 2000, and I think he has a Facebook page. Maybe I should visit him, but uh, maybe I should just fly back to Israel for a couple of days. And again, I know, we, yeah. Now that I mention Israel, it's gonna get political. Yeah. But you know, I grew up. I was a kid in Israel. I didn't know shit about politics. I didn't even. It wasn't my up my alley. Really miss this guy. We're just a couple of guys in French Hill, Jerusalem. So again, all I, I'm just seeing a whole bunch of walking corpses everywhere, you know? It's insane, it's like a nuclear blast, which selectively will kill uh, 6 out of 10 people, you know, maybe 7 out of 10. Alright, go ahead guys. Yeah. A nuclear blast which will selectively kill just randomly, seven out of ten people, or maybe maybe one out of two, uh, is about to spread. And I know that people like to say and draw the flu analogy. Imagine if flu were a new disease, you know, and you found out it kills tens of thousands of people. But again, flu doesn't quite have, as I mentioned before, flu doesn't have quite the kill ratio that Ebola does. Again, I know I sound like an alarmist prick right now. But the disease that kills seven out of ten people, or even one out of two, you haven't seen before. This is this is the plague. This is black death. This is uh, chlamydia. No, not chlamydia. Yes. <laughs> this is uh, gonna no no. This is you know what the this. Uh, This is typhoid, you know, uh, typhoid, all these horrible diseases you've heard of, you know, plague, typhoid, uh, Marburg. I don't know, I mean, I guess you just, you, you seriously, you don't think about death that much, you know? Okay, I do think about death <laughs> all the time, especially when I'm behind the wheel. I'm, I'm thinking this is my death, you know, this is my doom. But it just might not be. Might not, I might not die in a car crash after all, or from skin cancer. I might die of Ebola. I remember when I was a kid, I first read about it in this, you know, it was a little childish textbook. Uh, I think it was biology. I read both about AIDS and. Oh shit, I need to get a hands free. I really need to get a hands free. Hello? Hello? 
Да, я нашел, Маш, что так... Извини за рулем, что так что случилось? Как у вас... Как у вас тут было? А, в Боропарке, в, в уголку, в каком-то в угле... В... I'm just gonna go ahead and just have a whole bunch of urges. That's it. <laughs> Before Ebola is in everybody's fluids, you know, swimming around in their sweat, with blood and flame and white, what do you call it? White blood cells. When people see uh, when people see dead, dying, dead or dying Africans, to them it's just like a, like a trip to the supermarket. Like they're looking at, at meat. They're just so used to the sight of suffering in Africa.